Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, a few weeks back I had the, the bright idea. Mr. Milos's cage needed to be cleaned up. So I thought I would put him in this nice new cage and just move him across. You need to have a new uh, a new place to uh, call home, but uh, he seems to be somewhat unhappy, and uh, he always <laughs> see his chin resting here, looking out at the world. And uh, or and I sort of feel, you know, like he's depressed. I know that's sort of anthropomorphizing it, the situation, but um, so what I did is I put fair substrate in his old cage which has remained unoccupied since he was last in there and we're gonna go ahead and move his furniture and him back across to uh, his old homes where he might uh, might be a little bit happier I'm trying to do that of course without getting bit hello dude fortunately he's not as crazy as Mr. Milos oh Mr. K Oh, sorry, Mr. K. Sorry. Um, all right. So this is going to take uh, a little bit of thought. He ate yesterday, so hopefully he's not terribly snappy. You don't drop that on his poor little head. Well, I am going to try not to, but <laughs> at the same time, I'm trying not to get bit and end up in the hospital. So we have various uh, tools and stuff. And this is just your average run-of-the-mill gripper that you order online for people who, who may not be able to pick, bend over and pick things up. And believe me, uh, Mrs. Viper Keeper and I are reaching that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. And uh, um, so. back there. The upper sort of goes in there right next to the heat rock. He's so well behaved he's not even trying to come out. Uh, yeah, well, as I've explained, you know, once snakes get sort of accustomed to, you know, what they call home, um, they don't really like to leave unless they have to or are forced to. Uh, subsequently, uh, uh, a lot of the snakes, you know, won't, won't come out. Uh, um, you know, I've done, got distracted and have done stupid things, and I've left cage, cages open and come in the next morning and the snake is still in its cage. Um, not every snake, uh, certainly some snakes. Would you like to come out for a little mosey about? Hi, how are you? Huh? This is unusual. Huh? This is this is not normal for you. Last time I had him on the hook, he decided he was going to climb up and visit me. Mr. Milos is from one of the Greek islands in the Mediterranean called Milos, which is pretty funny. Um, think that the name the snake Milos Viper because it came from the island Milos uh, takes a lot of forethought to figure that out. Um, these are CITES protected animals. Uh, these were captive born in Europe and, and imported into the US um, where I obtained them. Uh, so since he's getting a little adventurous, we'll just let him crawl into his old cage. Yeah, I think he's just used to being a little bit lower down or he can see what's going on. He was so high up over there, he couldn't see anything. And I honestly think he was getting kind of 
Okay. Good press. Well, Mr. Milos is on his usual uh, um, winter diet. He goes off and on and will only eat live prey. during the winter months and uh, ooh, that's yucky I think I, I think this is contaminated uh, with goo oh. all right where is your pointy end this is probably really see now I spilled water all over his nice clean substrate uh, Looking a little more familiar. Mr. Milos, what are you doing? No, you cannot come over and visit the camera. I just said you can't do that. <laughs> He's going to do it anyway. He's going to do it anyway. So as I was saying, these are from the Greek Isles. And they're protected species because they're only found on one or two islands in the Mediterranean and the Greek uh, uh, area of Greece. Um, so they're protected species. Of course, this doesn't stop local people from killing them on sight as, you know, it's a venomous snake and it will do you bodily harm. It bites you. So natives absolutely positively kill them on sight. Uh, however, uh, they can't be collected. Uh, uh, unless you have the proper scientific permits um, at the time that their his parents left the Greek Isles and for Europe uh, they were not CITES uh, protected animals get uh, added to that protected list all the time and other animals get moved off the protected list like for instance down in Florida the American crocodile uh, used to be on the endangered list and after a very successful breeding program they're they're spreading throughout South Florida and they're in the coastal waterways where people you know have their houses and boats and their pets and stuff and sometimes your pet will disappear <laughs> if it gets too close to the water um, that's how successful the breeding program was that you'll see American crocodiles uh, uh, in the waters of Florida where they belong. They're native there uh, along with the American alligator and again the American alligator was protected and, and now it's so populated uh, in, in the south again uh, uh, that it's moved off the top tier of uh, protected species. So what I'll do is I'll let him crawl around a little bit and I'll decon my water can uh, uh, before I, uh, I give him some water later. So that's Mr. Milos, whose close friend Mr. K is below him and Mr. K is a big, the K is for crazy. Mm -hmm. um, he's also a very shy snake. Uh, he doesn't like a lot of activity, however, um, he will, when he knows food's at hand, he will be right up here on the glass. And sometimes I go in here at night to shut the air conditioner off in the winter, and I hear this thunk against the window. And I, I turn the flashlight over here one night after hearing a particularly loud thump, 
and he was laying on his back. He basically knocked himself out. I had to prod him with a hook a couple of times to bring him around, and he flipped back over like nothing had never ever happened. But um, <laughs> he sometimes is a little overzealous on his feeding response. Although, you know, he's completely, he, he gets fed you know, uh, quite well. He's very healthy, he's chubby, um, but he still still wants uh, more and more food until he would explode. He so, wants to convince you that he's starving. Yes, basically. yes, like a lot of the snakes are trying to convince me they're starving. So speaking of starving snakes, um, these guys need to be fed down here, the Egyptian saw scales. They haven't been fed yet today, so I see a little face peering out uh, expectantly. Yes, I will feed you. Earlier we saw this display of the death adders uh, saying feed me even though this isn't their week to be fed. So we've got lots of things to do here at the lair so we're going to continue. So here we have Mr. Barnetti who hasn't been fed in a little while and his nose is sort of sticking out of the log there anticipating something to come by and that's all it takes that's it. and if that was your hand that's all it takes to get a serious envenomation going you can just see a snoop there hi mr barnetti he's such a shy nice snake unlike the jararacas that go <laughs> flying across the room when you touch them going off like landmines holy cow pogo sticks with venom Okay, so we're going to close that and let him uh, uh, eat his meal, and we're going to move next door to the painted lance head. I'm not sure where her head is, but I know she's in there. Oh, there it is! Wow! Actually, she hasn't let go and retracted. That's probably because it's like, damn it, you didn't feed me for three weeks or so, and I'm not letting this go. I'm going to eat it. I don't care if you see me. Um, I'm just not going to let it go. This is very rare. Yeah, she's very rarely seen. Now at night when I come in to shut the air conditioners off when it's really cold out, when I mean really cold, I mean below 20 uh, Fahrenheit, uh, we shut the air conditioners off. Um, uh, she's out and about, but during the day, you don't see her. I mean, the fact that you actually see her head right now is is really rare. Uh, this is the painted lance head Bothrop, uh, Both, Bothrioides diporus. It used to be Bothrop. So, you know, these taxonomists change, you know, tax uh, uh, on a regular basis, sort of like you change your socks and underwear. You never know what the new name is going to be. There's going to be a new paper out saying, well, this is now this because we believe this evidence that we present uh, that's been peer-reviewed uh, says that this is genetically different enough from Bothrops. Uh, we're going to put it in this uh, sub-Bothrops uh, genera called Bothrioides. It, so, is yeah. this Miss Bobbitt? Uh, yes, this is a younger version of Miss Bobbitt. Um, I've bred this species before here. These are from the coastal plains of, of Peru, um, sort of an arid region. Um, I think they also move into more central locations of, of South America. Um, but yeah, these are called the painted lancets because they're really quite beautiful. This this one is very beautiful. It's just that you never see her. And I'm not going to get a hook and I'm not going to stick it in there and lift the lid because I've already had one encounter with a flying uh, Bothrops. Uh, mm -hmm. Today I don't need another lance head flying through the air at me. 